you'll meet people that would suggest, well, if you left this alone, it would turn into red spruce and yellow birch. Nothing could be further than the truth. This is going to remain a balsam fir mix wood stand for the next hundred years, and over the next hundred years, it's going to become more and more and more stressed due to climate change. That is what will happen here yeah. if you did nothing. Here. And I think what would be positive with respect to owners communicating and, and sourcing professional advice right. would be a collaboration between owners, yes. uh, foresters, technicians, as well as harvesting contractors yeah. who are in the industry. Right. It, it's key that, that there's collaboration. Now we find ourselves in a mixed wood stand. And in this case, we have red maple, yellow birch, some white birch, the occasional ash, and spruce fir. So balsam fir and the occasional red spruce. So you just call out the species out and I'll, I'll tell you. White birch. White birch. So historically, people have, have selectively logged these stands um, primarily for their softwood potential. 14, 16, and 20. So we have 20 meters square per hectare total. Okay. 10 square meters of hardwood, 10 square meters of softwood. Okay. 50-50. Yep. So considering the, co the composition we have, what is the risk, you know, f and forecasting this over the next 50 to 100 years? Right. How would you rate this, stand in terms of climate change? If an owner was not going to do anything today, the risk is very high. Mm. I agree with you. I think it is high risk. Yeah. And I think people would like to think that in the absence of intervention, that these stands will mm. just grow towards these highly idealized, perfect stands based on their values. I mean, this is going to remain a balsam yeah. fir dominated yeah. mixed wood. You know, I, I'm thinking about a type of intervention in here, um, obviously would be to open up the canopy, create soil disturbance, and encourage right. that regen of red maple, right. um, other hardwoods, of course. And we would most likely be targeting removing the spruce from the stand, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess thinking like if I, in my mind, if I forecast this ahead, I mean, this is an ideal oak site, like red oak, right. for example. Like if we were trying to introduce species that are uh, better adapted and that would grow well on a site right. like this. Red oak would be, to me, the number one. An option to consider for the yeah. owner. Yeah. yeah. And then white pine would definitely grow well here. Right. Conventionally, what would be done here is that, as you pointed out in terms of feasibility, mm. um, there's a lot of non merchant wood here and a lot of low value wood here. Yeah. I think the stand would be clear cut without a recognition right. that there's a lot of options in between that lead to different outcomes. And if owners are only consulting conventional harvesting contractors, th they're they're going to get that perspective only. That narrow they perspective. May, potentially, <clears throat> for the most right. part. They may not get that perspective that there are other options in here. I've heard several times from owners who, after the fact, have had harvesting done. They only discover after the fact that possibly there were other options. Right. At the end of the day, they may choose for a variety of reasons to clear cut a stand like this, mm. but if they are interested in long-term management or climate change um, adaptation and carbon storage, um, they will be well armed with options if they're, you know, if they're seeking out advice uh, from other professionals, not just conventional harvesting uh, contractors that will look at this strictly from a feasibility, which I understand, sure. and an economic perspective. Yep. Um, they, it has to be feasible in order for them to, you know, to do, to do their harvesting. Uh, but it won't, may not necessarily meet the objectives of the owner. The thing about managing for both climate change adaptation and carbon storage pushes one towards longer rotations right. and towards retention. Right. So what that leads to is stand forest conditions in the landscape that are older. 
right. and trees mm. that are older. Yeah. And, and, and leaving trees, some trees, and allowing them to actually get very old and die. Right. And, and, and in a world where, where timber supply is important, and yeah. you know, um, and, and, per, and perhaps even should be, we increasingly have fewer and fewer stands that reach those exactly those, those conditions and structures. So, yeah. um, I certainly think that that managing, in particular, towards carbon storage, is highly compatible with main, with maintaining some old forest structures. Maintaining and encouraging and encouraging it uh, yeah. woodlots or right. owners to yeah. to go in that direction. Yeah. You know, without being. Uh, overbearing about it. I, I think that landowners that want to manage their their force towards these long-term, these values that can only be realized through long-term management. They need the help of forest professionals to do that. Absolutely. They do. The most important thing is for, with regards to all this, is that landowners develop a better and deeper understanding of what they have, what it could mm. be, and what its potential is. Yeah. And where it's headed. So it's, it's for owners to take the time to explore their options uh, before they entertain any kind of a civil culture treatment or harvesting. Right.